Each of us brings our own story, our own challenges and our own yearnings for growth and healing. Now we're stepping into an insightful expedition to explore the roots of narcissism. Why does it matter? Firstly, the prevalence of narcissistic traits in society is more common than we often realize. It's almost as if we're navigating a labyrinth and understanding these traits is akin to having a map. Narcissistic traits not only influence our intimate relationships, but extend to professional environments, affecting teamwork, leadership and overall morale. So what's our starting point in understanding narcissism? Attachment, this fundamental, often overlooked aspect of human relationships. Attachment theory isn't just academic jargon. It's an intimate part of our daily lives. Think about it as the emotional and psychological blueprint that guides how you relate to others. We have secure and insecure forms of attachment. Secure attachment forms the foundation of balanced, healthy relationships, while insecure attachment can give rise to emotional challenges and indeed narcissistic traits. Studies tell us that insecurely attached individuals often develop coping mechanisms that look a lot like narcissistic behavior. Now let's pivot to another critical influence, parenting styles. Parents are often the first mirrors in which children see their reflection, emotionally and psychologically. In the realm of psychological research, names like Brummelman, Horton, Blow and Dretzky stand out for their explorations into how overindulgence and emotional neglect contribute to narcissistic tendencies. What's fascinating is that these parenting styles often serve as a template for adult relationships. For example, if a child is overindulged, they may grow up expecting the same level of attention and admiration from their partners, failing to realize that adult relationships require reciprocity. Conversely, children who experience emotional neglect may become adults who are intensely validation seeking, setting the stage for a cycle of emotionally imbalanced relationships. Being cognizant of these patterns is empowering. It allows you to identify them, better manage your emotional responses and make informed choices in your relationships. As we step deeper into the intricate dynamics of human behavior, we come across a term that has been gaining momentum in both psychology and biology, epigenetics. Think of it as the intersection where genetics and life experiences meet. Epigenetics is like the software that instructs your genetic hardware. It's as if your genes have volume knobs that can be turned up and down based on environmental factors. What's fascinating here is how epigenetic bridges the long-standing debate between nature and nurture. It's not just about what you were born with, but also how your environment, including your emotional landscape, can influence the genetic markers that affect your behavior. And believe it or not, psychological research is delving into this, opening pathways to revolutionary approaches to mental health. I bet many of you have heard the phrase, you are what you eat. But did you know that it's not just about your physical well-being? Your dietary choices can actually influence your gene expression. Research like the studies by Waterland and others in 2006 have opened our eyes to how nutrition can have lasting impacts on our epigenetic profile. Nutrients like folate, which you'll find in leafy greens, can affect gene methylation, essentially turning certain genes on or off. This is monumental because it means that your nutritional choices could affect not just your physical health, but your mental and emotional well-being. It offers an opportunity, especially for those recovering from emotional traumas like narcissistic relationships, to integrate dietary changes as part of a holistic healing strategy. Ah, mindfulness and emotional intelligence. 
two cornerstones of personal growth and psychological well-being. But what's even more intriguing is how these practices might influence our very DNA. Studies including the work of Kahneman and others in 2014 have indicated that mindfulness techniques can bring about epigenetic changes. Imagine that. By being present, by honing your emotional skills, you're not just improving your day-to-day -day life, but potentially influencing your genetic expression. Emotional intelligence training goes hand in hand with mindfulness. It's both aimed to increase your awareness of your emotional self and others. Learning to navigate your emotions skillfully can be particularly empowering when recovering from emotionally complex landscape of narcissistic relationships. So here we are at the intersection of psychology, biology and personal growth. We've journeyed through attachment styles, mirrored ourselves and parenting behaviors, and even delved into the cutting edge science of epigenetics. What does all of this signify for you, especially as you're navigating recovery? It's about transformative healing. We're not merely looking to patch up emotional wounds. We're exploring the potential for radical cellular level transformation. This is what I call transformative epigenetics. It involves a harmonious blend of psychological interventions and lifestyle choices aimed at not just healing, but true inner transformation. And you are the pioneers on this transformative journey. <laughs>